Hello, I'm Carolyn and in this video I'm going to show something totally different. As I use Inkscape for more than just creating cutting files, I just thought I'd show something different. In this video I'm going to show how you can use tile clones to create designs that you could use for mosaics or even cross stitch designs. So I'm just going to start with my photo. I just imported an image. If I look down here I can see that it is an image and I haven't done anything special to it. Next I'm going to draw a square. Now this image is 300 millimeters so I might make this 10 millimeters. I know I've got some mosaic tiles that are 10 millimeters. As I've got the padlock here locked I only need to change either the width or the height. So I just type in 10 and press enter. I'll just zoom in. I'm just placing my square up in the top left corner. Then I'm going to open the fill and stroke menu. If I look in the lower left I can see the fill is blue and there is no stroke. As I actually want my tiled clones to take on the properties of this image I click on the question mark. If I look at the lower left now I can see that fill is marked as unset. Just close this. To create my mosaic design I'll make sure I select my square then I'm going to go edit, clone, create tile clones. Now I get some more options. Symmetry I'm going to leave at P1 simple translation then I'm going to click on the trace tab. Trace the drawing under the tiles which is what I want to do so I'm going to click on that box, then I'm going to select colour. And the only other part I'm going to change here is in number 3, apply the value to the clones and I want to change the colour. Now then I need to nominate how many of these clones I want. So I can either enter a number in rows and columns or I can select width and height and enter a measurement here. Now I know this image is roughly 300 by 300, so I'll type in 300, 300, then click on create. Now if I look closely I can see the tile clones have actually worked, but I don't have spaces. As I plan to make this into a mosaic tile design, I'd like spaces. So I'll come to the shift tab. I'm going to alter the numbers here. For columns, just enter it at the top here where it says Shift X and then per column. So I'm going to enter 20. Now this is a percentage of the original square that was drawn. As that was 10 millimetres, 20% will mean I'll get a 2 millimetre space. So that will happen all the way across in the columns. And I also want this to happen in the rows. So I'll go to Shift Y and I'll add 20 there as well. Then I'll just click on Create. You can see now I've actually got a space in between. Now if, if I think that's too much I can come back and change this to 10. Then just click on Create. So as long as this original square is still selected, I can change any of these settings and hit create. I don't have to turn around and undo and start again. So when I'm happy with my design, just close this. Now this one here that is selected is the original square. All of these others are tiled clones. Now they are all linked and this is actually duplicated on top. So I can delete that one now by deleting that it should unlink all those other clones. If it doesn't work, just drag the mouse around all of the clones. Then up here there's a little padlock that is open. If you click on that it will unlink all of the clones. Then you just patiently wait. If you've got a lot of tiled clones this can take a little bit of time to do. Inkscape might say not responding but just be patient 
and it will usually work. There we go. Now the next step is to carefully remove the lower image. If you find this too hard, it's often easy to just click on one of the clones, send it to the back, and now you've got a nice clear, clear area to grab. Just move it out the way, and there you go, you've got a mosaic design. Now then, if I wanted to make this cross stitch, this won't have enough detail. Now I'm just going to make an example here, but this will depend entirely upon the design you're trying to create and how much detail you want. So I'll just draw another square. This time I might make it 4mm for the purpose of the video. The padlock's locked, so I only need to change the width or the height. So I'll just type in 4, press enter. Then I'll open fill and stroke. Then for fill, I'll click on the question mark. I can see there is no stroke, so that's fine. Then I'm just going to place this where I would like it to start. This time I might start on the blue. So once again, click on the square, go edit, clone, create tile clones. Leave it at P1, simple translation, shift. As this is a smaller square, 10% of 4 will be 0.4 of a millimetre. It might be a bit too small, but I'll leave it as it is. Trace. I've still got my settings from before. So the box is still ticked. Colour is still selected in section 1. Colour is still selected in section 3. So I can click on Create. These gaps are fairly small. But as a cross stitch design, that should be suitable. You can see here I've got all these extra tile clones. That's because I left this setting at 300 by 300, but I didn't start in the same point. So I might just change this to 280, say by 280, then click Create. And once again, you might find Inkscape will say not responding. And it may take a while for this to happen. I find 9 times out of 10 if I'm patient, it will go ahead and create all the clones. It's very rare that I've actually crashed it while doing this. Okay, now we've got all the tile clones. Once again, this is the original. And I can press delete. And it should unlink all the other clones. And just remove the image. Now I'm just going to drag the mouse around all of them. And go object group. That's just so that when I grab them to move them around, I'm not just going to grab a few of the squares and ruin the design. I know most of us who aren't cutters do many other crafts as well, so if you haven't thought of using Inkscape to help create other designs, it might be worth a try.